welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and I do all things embroidery. And in this tutorial, we'll be working on the perfect gift. I actually had someone request it, so let's get started. So this is what you get when you uh, get your kit in the mail or if you buy it in the store. And the chart is on the back of the picture, which is a great idea for saving paper. And then here's the picture diagram that we'll be referring to. And we're going to start on the first piece of felt. And on the back of that is the instructions. And then I already cut out the first piece that we'll be working on. And I'm just going to show you the beginning stitches and here's the rest of the felt that comes with the kit and I also went ahead and cut out an extra uh, piece of felt for the lining of this stocking so let's get started starting with the first piece which is blue and it's the main piece for the stocking grab two strands of red and we are doing the running stitch uh, normally, I just um, stay on top, but I'm just slowly showing you how to do the running stitch. Come up from the bottom and come down along the stamp. Easy enough. We'll be doing the running stitch all along the top, as well as the stars. They'll be different colors, but same idea. And then once we're done with the embroidery part, then we'll do the beads. I always do it in that order, regardless, because it's hard to do embroidery when there's a bunch of beads to work around because it tends to snag. We're using three strands of white, and this is the straight stitch. Now the straight stitch and running stitch are very, very similar. The difference is the running stitch tends to go um, like in sequence versus the straight stitch that's just one direction and then it stops. And then you go in a complete opposite direction and then it stops. So that's the difference between those. Other than that, they're pretty similar. Make sure you go slow. We're working with more than two strands. Especially with this thread, it tends to get knotted up really easily. If you've done this kit or know somebody that has done this kit, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your experience with this kit. This is my first time making this one in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these stars and then I'll come back. All right, I'm gonna show you how to bead. Grab one sequin and one bead in that order. Two strands of whatever color you're using. In this case, we're using kind of a gold color. Or maybe it's more yellow. Yeah, it's yellow. We're using yellow. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna bead all along the top. And we're going to bead all along the front um, according to the chart. So make sure you're using the right colors. We're using yellow sequins on top and white sequins for the snowflakes and blue for the rest. Okay, so here is what it looks like so far. Pretty simple. And I am not ironing this because it's just going to get covered up. So I'm not even going to bother. So grab the tree that we're going to work on and we're going to do the outline stitch here. Grab two strands of light green and uh, this is kind of a scallop so I'm just gonna show you the beginnings of the scallop and um, once you have all of the embroidery done then you can start doing the beadwork. Most of the time it tells you to do that in the instructions, um, not always. Sometimes it just kind of gives you a list of things to do, like, okay, bead and sequin and applique and embroider or whatever. Usually applique is last, obviously, but yeah, sometimes the order isn't quite 
the same. I've just learned to do all of the embroidery first and then the beading. Just to limit the snags. It's bad enough when you get snags when you're beading because, you know, you're snagging on other beads. But, oh, look at that. It's a knot. <laughs> oh, hello, old friend. Okay, this knot is very stubborn. Okay, I'm going to have to <laughs> fix that off camera. But I'll show you after I'm done. Okay, the outline stitch is done. And now we get to do a bunch of beading. Do you guys like to do beading? Leave a comment down below if you like to be if you like to bead. There's something very like cathartic about just beading and sequining over and over again. You, my mind tends to kind of wander and relax a little bit, which is doesn't happen very often, you know, with three kids running around. <laughs> anyway, so the string of beads that is draped alongside the tree are white, and the other dots that are kind of scattered along the rest of the tree are green. Okay, so make sure you refer to the chart as well as the picture that comes with it. So it's pretty self-explanatory, although, you know, sometimes I run on autopilot and just start beating and not thinking about it. But um, I had to really pay attention to make sure I'm beating the right areas. Luckily, the stamp is pretty clear, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I went ahead after my beading, I put these ornaments on and the middle stitch is a straight stitch and it's two strands of gold. And then I did the beading in the middle and I didn't applique them. That is an option, you don't have to do that. You can applique each individual one. It just saves me time to not applique them. Plus I kind of like it a little bit raw on the edge. Okay, so I made the candy cane off camera because I wanted to show you how I applique a stuffing to another piece of felt. So after I was done with the candy cane, I just knotted it at the end and then I kept the string on and I used it as an anchor. And I'm just showing you how I put the finished candy cane onto the tree. And these are technically tack down stitches. There are um, there are a few of them, but there are enough to make sure that the candy cane isn't going anywhere, but it still looks like it's kind of popping out of the tree. So the candy cane is really simply simple to put together. You're beating each stripe and then applicating the stripe and then um, stuffing the candy cane. So pretty simple. I've done candy canes before. All right, so that's pretty secure. I'm gonna go ahead and knot it on the back. Always with my double knots. And you don't have to hide your string if you don't want to. It's just a, a habit of mine, because you won't see it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the rest of these on. All right, here's the rest of the candy canes completed. And I pinned the tree onto the stocking and I pre-stuffed it. Um, this is just gives me an idea of how to place the tree onto the stocking and it just um, it helps me make sure that the stuffing is even. So I just kind of picked a random spot to start and I use my needle to push down the stuffing as I go and as I I think about three quarters of the way I kind of checked the stuffing to see if I needed to add more and usually I understuff on purpose so that, you know, if I decide, oh, you know what, I should probably add just a little bit more, then that's better than overstuffing. And then, you know, having your felt warp or whatever. So, I've had several people ask me how I applique while stuffing. And it's always a slow process, especially when you're a beginner and this is totally new for you. I always go really, really slow and make sure I follow the dotted line on the felt behind the piece that I'm applicating. Because if you um, accidentally applique too far up or too far down, um, it might shift the pattern. So make sure that when you're applicating these pieces that are stuffed onto a flat surface like this stocking, 
that the, you are following the dotted line. So I'm going to continue this off camera because it's it keeps snagging. So anyway, I'm going to finish it. This is what we have so far. Finished tree looking very cute. Next week I will show you the first kitten on the on the tree. It's in the cute little present box. So I'll show you how to do that next. Look out for that tutorial. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.